This is Andy Brown, Editorial Director of the Bloomberg New Economy. Welcome to Bloomberg New Economy Conversation. I'm delighted to introduce our new interview series on the front lines of business. In this series, I'll be talking with CEOs and leading executives on the key decisions they're making at this time of global crisis. As China begins to emerge from quarantine and restrictions are eased in Hubei province and elsewhere, the Chinese economy is experiencing an encouraging bump in domestic travel. My guest today calls it green shoots of recovery. I'm joined by Jane Sun, CEO of the Trip.com Group, China's largest online travel platform with more than 400 million users and 45,000 employees. Jane joins us from Shanghai. Hello and welcome, Jane. Thanks for having me, Andy. In China, the coronavirus hit at the worst possible time for the travel industry, just days ahead of the Chinese New Year holiday. Tens of millions of Chinese travelers suddenly canceled their holidays and their business, trip, business trips and were demanding refunds. As CEO of China's largest online travel agency, you had to suddenly switch gears and slam the whole business into reverse. Talk us through the first few critical actions and decisions that you had to make. Mm. Uh, it was uh, during the Chinese New Year uh, that uh, Wuhan was locked down and the government uh, took a very decisive measure uh, to make sure the group tour does not go outside of China, which is a very responsible way uh, to make sure uh, that uh, China control and contain the virus outbreak. Uh, so as the largest player in China, we support government's position uh, and we implemented very uh, rapid uh, measures to make sure we take care of our customers. Uh, the volume increased 20x uh, on the date when the policy was implemented. So we need to make sure we put customers' interest first uh, by allowing them uh, to make delay change of their travel plan right away. Uh, so we, the first step we took is to make sure uh, the medical uh, personnel is very well taken care of and also the patients uh, are very well taken care of. So we announced 100% uh, uh, coverage uh, for these people. The second step is for us to take care of the general uh, population of our travelers. So we announced we have 100 million a natural disaster relief fund to take care of our customers. And followed by the first First two steps, we also added another 100 million to the Natural Disaster Relief Fund to take care of extra uh, requests from our customers. Uh, so that has been done uh, immediately after the policy was adopted. The second thing is really to bring our global suppliers into the uh, game because at that time, China was alone fighting this outbreak. Uh, very few uh, suppliers understood what was going on within China. Uh, so our team reached out to our suppliers and I reached out to, to many of the CEOs in the global places, including the CEOs in hotels, the CEOs of airlines, the CEOs of cruise ships and the local tour operators to make sure they are aware of what's going on in China. But a lot of them were so far away from China. Uh, some of them uh, told me that whatever you know, Trip.com uh, recommend, they were just to follow. Uh, but some of them uh, told me they're a big company, they need time to make a decision, which I totally understand. And I told them, we understand that you're a big uh, op organization, please take your time, analyze everything. But this is what we see in the front line. Uh, this is the recommendation. Uh, we have for you. So fortunately, very quickly, after I reach out to, to the older CEOs, after our team reach out to their China team, we come to the conclusion, uh, this is what we need to do. Instead of handling case by case, we need to develop a very scalable model to handle uh, these change, delay, uh, requests of customers trip. Uh, so very quickly, our suppliers are onto the game as well. 
And uh, the third thing we did is to establish a 1 billion fund to help uh, our partners in the ecosystem, uh, to help them with the cash flow so that the ecosystem is protected. And we were uh, very uh, well uh, protected uh, from uh, that uh, uh, plan. Uh, so these are the two steps on the customer side, on the partner side, and then the last one was also uh, simultaneously, we need to make sure the employees are very well taken care of. Uh, so we adopted a safety net. Uh, our supervisors take temperatures of our employees every hour. Uh, we ordered uh, masks uh, for employees to put on. And we encourage our employees to first uh, take care of themselves. Uh, if they don't feel well, we encourage them to work at home um, and uh, uh, the security sanitation was followed up. And gradually, we also uh, have this uh, work at home uh, policy. And 10 years ago, C4 was the, one of the first pioneers uh, to have the work at home pilot program running. And this time it really kickstart very fast. Well, uh, so now it's... Uh, I, want, I wanted to ask you about that because, you know, Asian businesses are long used to dealing with epidemics, with natural disasters. You had SARS in 2003, you had a tsunami, you've had typhoons, floodings. What preparations or what emergency plans did you put in place as a result of those disasters that were helpful to you during this disaster? Hmm. Yeah, even before this disaster happened, uh, we have a SOS program. Uh, so we handled uh, the tsunami in Japan, the earthquake in Nepal, the shootings in Las Vegas, uh, the storm in Thailand. So in a much smaller scale. However, our team is very well trained uh, to uh, reach out to the customer within minutes, uh, take care of them, make sure they are very well protected, and then uh, bring them home uh, when the flights resume the routes. Uh, so it, although it was within much smaller scale, it gave our team a very good uh, a, a platform uh, to exercise uh, the team inter-unit uh, cooperation between teams. Uh, so this time it's a much bigger scale. It took multi-units cooperation to take care of our customers, our suppliers, and our employees. Is there anything that you wish that you had done in terms of emergency planning that you didn't do that might have improved your response this time? Or put another way, what are the lessons that you take away from this coronavirus? Hmm. Compared to the other players in the travel industry, I think uh, Trip.com probably had the opportunity uh, to exercise before the uh, disaster hit better than anyone else because our business is so complex. Not only we have hotel, air ticket, rental car, chauffeur car, tour operation, cruise, uh, wedding plan, everything. Uh, so the team in relative terms is very well prepared. Uh, but this time our engineering team really set up. Uh, it used to, you know, some of the project for automation uh, normally will take one quarter uh, to uh, be implemented. This time, all the engineers work a day and night, night uh, to make sure we have automations right on the uh, on, on, right on time. So we have one key you can uh, submit your request for your change, cancel uh, of your uh, travel plan. And that was very helpful because if we use humans to take care of everything, it's just impossible. Did you have any sense back in the beginning, back at the Chinese New Year holiday, that this uh, epidemic could become or could turn into a global disaster, that it could spread from Wuhan to the whole of Hubei, to the whole of China, and eventually to the entire world? When, when, did, when, did you get a, when did you get a real sense that this was, this was going to become an international disaster? Yeah, we, nobody, I don't think anybody, any nation was prepared for that. Uh, you know, China was fighting this uh, outbreak for two months 
uh, every other country saw that, but yet, you know, you saw what's going on uh, outside of China. So I think uh, we always feel it's controllable, uh, but the virus uh, really is uh, much stronger than anybody anticipated. Uh, so no nation had a rehearsal uh, for this kind of disaster. We just have to plan ahead of the game, make sure we're very uh, fast in terms of handling uh, everything. Uh, we move one to two steps ahead of the game uh, so that our customers, our uh, partners, and our employees are very well protected. So you're a big company with deep pockets. Um, but what about the smaller companies that you rely on for your operations? I'm thinking about restaurants, about bus companies, about tour guides, tourist shops, and so on. How are they managing to survive? What are you doing to support them? Mm. Yeah, so uh, for every uh, partners that's impacted, we immediately connect them with all the players in the market. Uh, so for example, uh, our local tour operators, some of them work with the hotels, some of them work with the airlines. So immediately, rather than we deal case by case, uh, we work with the global chains to make sure everyone understand what's going on. Uh, so the local tour operators, uh, the bus company, the local tour operators uh, can go to the hotels, can go to the airlines, and, and we work as one team to make sure uh, once the customer requests a change, everything on the chain is changed so that we can minimize the uh, losses uh, in, the, in the food chain. So obviously China was the first into the COVID-19 crisis and it's one of the first countries to come out of the crisis. What is recovery looking like? Where are you seeing what you call these green shoots? Mm. In uh, Jan end of January and February, the whole country shuts down for about uh, four weeks to six weeks. And at the end of March, we saw business start to uh, come back. Our company, uh, resume work totally online on February 10th. And on February 17th, we're back into the office having face-to-face -face meetings already. Uh, now, uh, we are working with our local uh, team to make sure uh, gradually uh, we can handle these volumes. Um, and people have been locked down for a long, long time. I think the desire to travel is there. The ability to travel is there. We just need to make sure we are methodic, organized, and opening up uh, in a way that uh, people's health is ascertained. Uh, so we talk to the doctors. Uh, the doctor recommend you go to parks in open air first, uh, even wear masks if it's necessary. Try to reduce the lines. Uh, so these are the good habits in the long run even after the outbreak of the virus, people can still carry on in order to make sure, you know, you still have uh, lots of pleasure uh, while traveling, but uh, prevent a potential spread uh, among people. What do you think are the long-term changes that are likely to come out of this for the travel industry? Do you think, for instance, that you'll see a recovery, a full recovery of business travel, or will business people decide that teleconferencing and other virtual convenings are adequate? Mm. Uh, we think in the short term, it's, uh, the impact is significant uh, because now we're social distancing uh, is trying to prevent people from contacting each other. So the short term impact is significant. In the medium term and long term, I think people will travel as usual. Uh, no, if I have a clone, uh, the clone might help me with my housework, uh, but uh, I want to travel. Uh, that's the real me I want to travel. So I think for leisure travel, uh, in terms of percentage of the total travel in China, it's still increasing. Uh, in the long run, uh, it's still a very booming industry. But will people be, be able to afford to travel as they used to? And this is a huge hit, not just to the Chinese economy, but to the, to the entire global economy. Mm, that's right. That's true. That's true. I think uh, uh, right now it's the first step 
is really for medical uh, uh, personnel to develop the medicine. And also as a private citizen, we need to do our part to reduce the spread. Uh, so the government's policy is, first of all, take care of yourself so you don't get sick. Secondly, if you don't feel well, try to isolate yourself so you don't give the, the virus to others. So that's the private citizen's responsibility. We take care of our society while medical resources is uh, be poured in to develop the medicines. Um, uh, so that's the first step. The second step is really restart the economy. And I think the government is doing the right thing, try to encourage uh, the bankers, uh, give more resources and funds to the small media businesses. And then uh, the economy will be resumed. Uh, but uh, I, I'm always optimistic. I think uh, humans are resilient and strong. Uh, if we work together as one group, one team, we'll be able to find a way uh, to overcome the challenges facing, we are facing together. And last question, one last question. When do you think Chinese travelers will start venturing overseas again? When will we see those big spending Chinese tourists in New York and Paris and London? Mm. I think uh, based on what we have seen so far in China, uh, in Q2, uh, the volume start to resume. In Q3, normally is the busy season for Chinese tourists to, to take their children to visit other countries. Uh, so this time it will recover within China first for domestic China. And then the people's desire and demand to go abroad is still very high. So it's really depending on how safe uh, each nation is. For example, Korea uh, right now, the uh, outbreak seems to be very well controlled. Uh, so we are hoping Korea, Japan, Singapore, uh, if these countries control the virus quite well, and our traveler perceive these are the safe uh, travel destinations, there might be chances uh, for uh, bilateral um, border op being opening up. Uh, the, but the premise is uh, for the traveler to perceive, to understand the risks that's involved, and they have confidence in the destinations they travel to so that they don't risk their families when they bring their children to these destinations. So the first step is very important, uh, which is to control the virus, to control the outbreak. Jane Sun, thank you so much for being with us. We wish you the best as China reopens and trip.com gets back to business. Thank you so much for having me.